Hello, my name is Maria from mathmammoth.com. In this lesson, we're going to study quadrilaterals and we're going to classify them. Let's start with these four that you already know about. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral, in other words, a four-sided shape, where this and this side are parallel and this and this side are parallel. In other words, it has two pairs of parallel sides. Now, a rectangle has four right angles. I could mark them here with these little squares. A square also has four right angles, but also each of its sides is congruent. In other words, of the same length, and we can mark that with those little marks like that. Do you remember the definition of a rhombus? In a rhombus, it's also called a diamond shape. Again, each side is of equal length, or all the sides are congruent. Now I have organized those four types of quadrilaterals here in a tree diagram. It is basically like a family tree for quadrilaterals. And uh, here we have the parallelogram. And then when we go down this way, this here, the rhombus is like a child of the parallelogram, or it belongs to the parallelogram family. Also, the rectangle belongs to the parallelogram family. And then square belongs to the rectangle family, and so on, okay? In other words, a rectangle is also a parallelogram. It belongs to the family. Or a square is also a rectangle, right? A square is also a rhombus, and so on. Here it is asked, is a square a rhombus? Is a square a rhombus? Yes, it is. You can see it from the diagram because it is here like a child or it is in that family. Or you can think of the definition. The definition of a rhombus is that all four sides are congruent. Is that true of the square? Are all four sides congruent? Yes, they are. So a square is a rhombus. Is a square a parallelogram? Again, you can use this diagram here. Is a square a parallelogram? Does it belong to the parallelogram family? Yes, it does, because it's like a grandchild here in the diagram. Or you can think of the definition. In a parallelogram, the opposite sides are parallel, and that is true of the square. These sides are parallel, these are two. Is a rhombus a square? Is a rhombus a square? Now the answer is no. In a square you need to have four right angles, and a rhombus wouldn't have that. All four sides of a quadrilateral are congruent, and one of its angles is a right angle. Is it a rhombus? Can you answer that? Read it again. All four sides of a quadrilateral are congruent. If you think back, isn't this exactly the definition of a rhombus? All four sides are congruent. So we don't actually need this piece of information that one of its angles is a right angle. Just basing it here, it is a rhombus, yes. Okay. A few more special quadrilaterals here. A trapezoid. In a trapezoid, we have at least one pair of parallel sides. In this one, this side and this side are parallel, okay? And this side and this side are not. The definition says that it has at least one pair of parallel sides, so it could have two pairs of parallel sides too. Then kite, you've seen kites. But what is the definition of a kite? In a kite, we have two pairs of congruent sides. This and this side are congruent. And then this and this side are congruent. The congruent sides are neighboring sides, touching each other. And then this last one, a scalene quadrilateral, it means that none of the sides are congruent, okay? None of the sides are the same length. I have now expanded the tree diagram or the family tree of quadrilaterals here. And uh, we have a kite here, a trapezoid there, 
then parallelogram, rhombus, rectangle and square. Now you might wonder where is the scalene quadrilateral, the one that doesn't have any congruent sides. Uh, it would kind of go off on its own over there. It does not exactly belong. None of these here would be scalene quadrilateral, so it would have to go over here on its own. And uh, once again, let's say we look at trapezoids, then everybody downstream from trapezoid is in the trapezoid family. And uh, they are like children and grandchildren. We can use this diagram now to answer some of the questions here. Is a kite a rhombus or vice versa? Is a kite a rhombus? If I use the diagram, I find a kite and a rhombus. Does the kite belong to the rhombus family? No. Or vice versa, is a rhombus a kite? Yes, right? A rhombus is here under the kite, downstream from there. Is a rectangle a trapezoid? A rectangle and a trapezoid. You can see it from the diagram that yes, a rect rectangle here belongs to the trapezoid family. The definition was that in a trapezoid we have at least one pair of parallel sides and that is true of the rectangle. It has at least one pair of parallel sides. The sides of a trapezoid measure 4 centimeters, 4 centimeters, 4 centimeters and 6.5 centimeters. Is it also a parallelogram? A kite? Okay, we're given the side lengths, so you can maybe try to imagine this trapezoid in your mind. 4 centimeters, 4 centimeters, 4 centimeters, and then one of them is longer, 6.5 centimeters. Is it also a parallelogram? Now, in a parallelogram, when we look at the side lengths, you might have learned this earlier, in a parallelogram, this and this side are congruent, and then this and this side are congruent. So if you had these, 4, 4, 4, and 6.5, it would not work. You would have 4 and 4, and then this and this would have to be 6.5 both. So it cannot be a parallelogram. Is it also a kite? This trapezoid here? Now in a kite, I would have a 4 and 4 centimeter sides, and then 6.5, 6.5 centimeter sides, right? because I need two pairs of congruent sides. So these kinds of side lengths would not work for a kite. A quadrilateral has one pair of parallel sides. What kind of quadrilateral can it be? One pair of parallel sides. Now that is, of course, it reminds you of a trapezoid, right? One pair of parallel sides. So it could be a trapezoid. Now, could it be, for example, could it be a parallelogram? It says it has one pair of parallel sides. Now, if this means that it has exactly one pair of parallel sides and that the other two sides are not parallel, if this question means that, then it cannot be a parallelogram. But if it meant at least one pair of parallel sides, then we would have a different answer. Then it would be a trapezoid, but it could be any of these two. But if it means exactly, let's write it here. If the question is that it has exactly one pair of parallel sides, then it cannot be any of these because these have two pairs of parallel sides. So it has to be a trapezoid. Okay, I hope that was not too confusing. We are all done with this lesson.